like we project meaning onto things yeah. and it's what artists do to like you know an exaggerated degree yeah. like we, we we're the freaks of that <laughs> we're the freaks of that yeah I had weird moments where I was doing this stuff where I felt like I was, I don't know what the right word is, because it gets really weird, but like in contact with something different. You know what I mean? A different intelligence. Maybe a different kind of intelligence. Like, mm. like it's not exactly the shock of the new, it's just this shock of recognition. Mm. That you're seeing something that what you didn't know was meaningful to you. So, and, and you also don't know where it's coming from. So it creates sort of, a, a strange emotional state, I would say. It's very bizarre. I think it's impossible to anticipate what this medium even is in the moment. Correct. Because we're still cannibalizing old forms, right? Mm -hmm. We're still like using this to write novels or write songs or whatever, and I'm not sure that's what it's ultimately going to be used for. Oh, yeah. Just like they did with plays and in, in movies, right? It's like we're going to shove the play into the film format and make it work, because that's what, we know people go to theaters to see plays. It's funny, I mean, I, I did a yeah. sort of informal survey of how music of the future has been represented in sci-fi films, like, and TV from, from the beginning of time, and it's always like, so much a reflection of its time, you know, like Star Trek in the 60s doing music of the 2030s, it's 60s music. The Matrix doing the, the cave rave in the second Matrix movie, that's early 2000s, like, right. you know, Perfect. club music. It's not the future, it's a, it's a kind of, it's the present with like a funny hat on, yeah, you know, and right. that's kind of where we're at. People, you know, they have these nostalgic ideas about, about handicraft and so on. Like, half of the job of an artist is recognizing what's meaningful. And the job of the artist is also, to a certain extent, to kind of metabolize change. Mm. You know, like, Indeed. things come along, new technologies that have potentially disruptive capacities. Yes. There, there is a very valid tendency to want to push away from that, but those who have kind of survived those transitions are the people that have taken some aspect of that technology and made it integral to their own work. Right. Or reacted against it, engaged with it, had a conversation with it, and like, kind of passed it, if you were like a kidney stone or something. And I want to see that happen with AI in the same way. I don't know how that happens because of the scales at play. Yeah. And the pace of change is so drastic. We're having like an invention yeah. of photography level event. Once every six months. Yeah. And that creates an environment where there are going to be a lot of hucksters and scams. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Cultural hysteria. People can't deal with one leap before the next one happens. They haven't processed the one before. We're until still processing the cameras. You know? That's We're right. Still thinking about we, we still haven't worked out what the consequences of film are. One thing I've really come to believe from using this stuff is that human creativity is indestructible. Totally, like, 100%. It, like, it can't be destroyed because we can't escape from it. We always need it. Like it's a solution to our pathologies and our pathologies are definitely not going away. Yeah. Right? So like, and, and the technology is producing more of them all the time. In my own experience trying to make stuff with these technologies, I had this like misunderstanding initially that if I could just train a model on my own history, right. that it would give me the formula. I mean, just, you know, that it would give me some kind of algorithm for me, you know? Right. And I didn't really realize until I started trying to do that, that when I make art, it's a very delicate, dynamic, non-linear system that Correct. can be set off and its direction changed by any number of completely unpredictable phenomena. You know, a rainy day, yes. a heartbreak, yeah. a death in the community, right. I read a book. There's so many factors that like spin it off its axis and away from this sort of linear extrapolative thing that AI does or can do, which is, you know, yeah. continue to iterate based on what comes before. That's what you realize when you go right up against them, when you use them as tools, mm -hmm. right? It's like, actually, I'm not an algorithm, neither is the audience, neither, neither is anyone. And creative AI is actually a, a very good way of being conscious of the archives you inhabit and the algorithms that generate out of them. Mm -hmm. 
you're actually kind of consciously taking your own algorithm and using it as the material to build something from. And that to me, like maybe, I don't know, like obviously this is the most optimistic reading possible, but like, like the argument for creative AI to me is not more automation. It's actually more humanization of the machine, right? And, and human control of the machine. Because otherwise you'd just be its victim. Otherwise you'd just be there splayed on you your couch, watching the game and watching reels at the same time, like like being consumed.